Today we are starting a topic volumetric analysis. Volumetric analysis, it is generally called titration. This method is commonly used in the laboratories. The detection of unknown acid, acidic strength or basic strength, or oxidizing agent, or, some, or determination of the strength of oxidizing agent, or reducing agent, etc. Now, before starting the volumetric analysis, we will uh, discuss uh, some apparatus which is required in the in this uh, titration method or volumetric analysis. So, we will first discuss some important apparatus which will be required. The first apparatus which will be required for this method is that is called burette. The burette is a this type of column. It will be made by the help of glass or plastic. Uh, in this tube, we fill any solution. In the marking of this tube, upper side is that is 0 and the uh, lower end is 50 ml. Now each tube is calibrated, so the 0, then 1, then 2, so therefore is a maximum value that is 50 ml. So this one is tube is called burette. Another second apparatus which is used that is called pipette. Pipette that is this type of glass tube. Here is the circle mark and here is the some instruction given like 20 ml at 27 degree centigrade. This instruction means um, if we are given any solution up to this mark, up to this circle then the volume of that solution becomes 20 ml at 27 degree centigrade. So this tube is called the pain. Now the third uh, apparatus is called a conical flask. The conical flask of this type, this one is called conical flask. Now the other fourth apparatus is called final. So basically in the volumetric analysis, the two important apparatus, the first becomes burette, then the second becomes pipette. And also around the helping apparatus is conical glass and then now we will discuss what is the meaning of volumetric analysis and how it can be applied to the determination of unknown and to the determination of concentration of unknown acid base or oxidizing or reducing agent. First we have discussed what is the meaning of volumetric analysis? Volumetric analysis is a method of quantitative analysis. It involves the measurement of the volume of a known solution required to bring about the completion of the reaction with the measured volume of the unknown solution whose concentration energy or strength is to be determined. By knowing the volume of the known solution, the concentration of the solution under investigation can be calculated. For example, if we are having HCl and the volatility of the HCl is that is 1 by 20 or simply m by 20, next volume becomes 200 ml. Now, by the using of uh, this volumetric analysis or titration method, the our aim is to finding out the volatility of the NMH. So, we have done an experiment that is called volumetric analysis, and by the, by the help of this experiment, we can find out the volatility of the given NMH solution. So, now we will discuss how, how we can find out the volatility of annual solution by the help of this method. Now we will discuss, uh, first discuss some important terms which is related with this titration or volumetric analysis. The first we come is 
titrate and also called known solution and known solution means the solution which uh, molarity and strength is known the reagent or substance whose solution is employed to estimate the concentration of unknown solution is termed titrate there are two types of reagent or titrate the first become primary titrant These reagents can be accurately weighed and their solution are not to be standardized for use. Means primary and titrants or primary reagents are those reagents whose solution is directly prepared by the chain. For example, oxalic acid. Its formula is COH, COH dot two H two. Basically, it's a hydrated oxalic acid, potassium dichromate. That is K two Cr two O seven silver nitrate. That is AgNO three copper sulfate. That becomes CuSO four ferrous ammonium sulfate FeSO four dot NH four whole twice SO four dot six H two. That is commonly called warm salt. So these all are reagents are called primary titrants. Now the next one is secondary titrants. Secondary titrants or secondary reagent are those titrants or those reagent whose solution cannot be prepared directly. Uh, means their solution can be standardized. Means their solution should be standardized for use. For example, sodium hydroxide, that is NaOH, potassium hydroxide, KOH, hydrochloric acid, HCl, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, iodine, I2, potassium permanganate, KMnO4. Potassium permanganate is KMnO4. That is called potassium permanganate. So these are the common secondary titrants whose solution is cannot be prepared directly. Now, computing the titrants, we will discuss about standard solution. The solution of exactly known concentration of the titrant is called the standard solution. For example. We are having the two solutions. First one is KMnO4, and other one is ferrous ammonium sulfate, that is FeSO4 dot NH4 whole twice SO4 dot 6H2O. And we are saying that in these two solutions, molarity of that ferrous ammonium sulfate is 1 by 30, and this total volume becomes 200 ml. So we can say that in this process the ferrous ammonium sulfate or mohor salt it is called standard solution or titrate now the next one is titrate the solution consisting the substance to be estimated is termed unknown solution or titrate so simply titrate means unknown solution for example if we are taking the example KMnO4 and again ferrous ammonium sulfate FAS with the shortcut for ferrous ammonium sulfate mohor salt. So in this process we are saying that molarity of this FAS becomes 1 by 30 volume becomes 200 ml and our aim is to finding out the molarity of this KMnO4 then we can say that in this process the KMnO4 becomes titrate or KMnO4 solution is called unknown solution. Now the next important term about it is equivalence point. The point at which the reagent and the substance under investigation are chemically equivalent is termed as equivalence point. Means the point at which 
the chemical reaction is just complete between known solution and unknown solution completed is called equivalence point for example uh, if we are having the HCl that molarity becomes m by 20 and volume becomes 20 ml and the other solution becomes NaOH and the, we are finding the molarity of NaOH so when we are reacting the HCl with NaOH then at the, the point at which the reaction of 20 ml HCl is completed with the NaOH is called equivalence point it can be measured by the help of the view rate which will be previously taken now next one is end point here is a difference only one point between equivalence point and end point since equivalent point uh, come just after the equivalence point so uh, we are saying that equivalence point is the point at which reaction is just complete between two given substance so that point is called equivalence point and uh, just after the equivalence point the point comes is called equivalent point so for example we are uh, we are generally saying that reaction between HCl and NMH are completed at uh, uh, at this one is buried if we are filling the solution and this one is the mark so this one is the 10 ml and if we are seeing that uh, reaction between HCl and NaOH is just complete at this when we are uh, having the volume of NaOH 10 ml this one is 10 so we are saying that in this process the equivalence point becomes 10 but uh, if we are having the uh, what is the end point so just after the equivalence point just after the reading of 10 we have 10.1 so we are saying that 10.1 that is called its end point so we are simply saying that and that is the difference between equivalence point and end point becomes uh, between only single drop or maybe um, half drop but uh, uh, end point is just come after the equivalence point